Well, more companies, as you know, are implementing uh, President Biden's vaccine mandates on all businesses with 100 or more employees. Questions have started rising now about the legality of these vaccine mandates. And, of course, two federal court decisions, one in Michigan, one in New York, now indicating that if you have a religious objection to the mandates, it's going to hold. It's going to stand. Does Biden have the power to force millions of people to get vaccinated? That's the real question. Who has more power to ban or implement mandates? The states? Well, the federal government. Joining me, one of my favorite senior fellow at the National Center for Public Policy Research, Horace Cooper. Always shy, but we'll see if we can bring him out of his shell a little bit. Horace, good to see you as always, my friend. Uh, who has the power here? Is it uh, Joe Biden with his executive orders and mandates, or is it the states like uh, Governor DeSantis and Governor Abbott that say, no, you can't do that to us? What's your answer? Well, as, well, as we've learned from our founding documents, our founders never intended for the federal government to be a government with so-called super police powers. The federal government is supposed to have limited responsibilities and the Bill of Rights place even clear limits on those explicit and defined responsibilities. There is no authority to issue a vaccine mandate granted to the federal government in the Constitution. So many leftists and the media, maybe that's redundant, have uh, identified the Jacobs, Jacobson case from 1906 involving a case where Massachusetts was challenged over its power to require a vaccine. The Supreme Court acknowledged and accepted, and it is good precedent, that Massachusetts might have this authority. But they've never implied hinted or suggested that the federal government might. Even if the federal government does, and I tell you, no sound reading of the Constitution would allow that, the Bill of Rights places a limit on the ability of the federal government to carry out its responsibilities, and that includes our religious freedom that is guaranteed in the Constitution. That can't be overridden in a pandemic or in some period of uh, so-called emergency by our federal government. Well, now, and, and I agree with you on your plain and uh, clear reading of the Constitution, but Horace, as you know, uh, these courts, uh, sometimes it feels like they've stuck their finger in the air to check the, the direction of the political winds that are blowing that given day. But, as I mentioned, two courts, the sixth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ruling in favor of college athletes at Western Michigan University last week and, uh, and continuing that injunction saying the university cannot force them to get vaccinated, cannot throw them off their teams either. Uh, and then just yesterday, the state of New York, uh, a ruling in favor of health care workers who say they have a religious exemption to getting the shot. You argue, I think, it goes farther than that because the federal government, Joe Biden specifically, has no right to in to uh, mandate any of it. The states, case by case basis. But I do like the fact that both courts, one was a Clinton appointee, one was a George Bush appointee, both siding with religious freedom. I think that is a good sign. So I don't want to go in too far because we're not in class. But there is a uh, the notion of selective incorporation of the Bill of Rights, and that is the doctrine by the Supreme Court to apply the Bill of Rights to state actions. When the case was ruled on in 1906, even though the religious issue wasn't raised, the courts had yet to apply the First Amendment to state action. Today, they readily do that, and there is no likelihood whatsoever that there would be a waiving of your constitutional right uh, uh, under, the uh, under the religious clauses of our Constitution, even in the midst of a pandemic. So that means even state governments must offer religious exemptions and must come up with a way to accommodate with people's faith. Whereas the federal government doesn't have the vaccine power, and I believe that the Department of Labor's OSHA rules are likely to be found unlawful, and even the president's mandate on private employers who are uh, contractors with the federal government may also be successfully challenged in court. The problem here is, as you point out, 
there are these judges at the local level, even some of them in federal courts, who are so eager to demonstrate their wokeness, we have to wait until they get to appellate courts or higher before they're overturned. Shame on Horace, those do you judges. think we'll get to a point, will we get to a point that these questions are answered before this pandemic goes away? Because as you know, infectious disease is a fact of life on the planet Earth. Uh, we'll see more pandemics, maybe less, maybe more, but we will see them again. Fact of the matter is, we'll face these questions again. I think it's extremely important we get these questions answered as soon as possible. But going to court, as you know, is a process. It's off, often long and arduous uh, in the process. When do you anticipate we'll get some more concrete answers? Well, I do think it's going to take a little while for the Supreme Court to ultimately opine on these cases. Let me say, in addition to shame on some of these district court judges, shame on this administration. They know when they talk to their lawyers, both the Department of Justice and those lawyers in the office of the White House Counsel, that these behaviors exceed traditionally recognized limits of the president's power and that of the federal government. Shame on them for being silent, not acting as whistleblowers, and shame on the administration for not listening to these individuals. It's probably yes. high time that some in Congress decide to say that this might constitute impeachable offenses. We'll leave it right there, Horace. I think you summed it up nicely. Put a bow right on top for everybody to appreciate. Thank you. Horace, always appreciate talking to you. It, it is like going to class, and I appreciate that, as do the viewers. <laughs>